Well, good afternoon. We're back to English 211. And I trust that you have listened to the lecture for this unit, which you see uh, at uh, the topic of which you see at the top of this page, Changes in the U.S. Job Market. Now, you have listened to this lecture, I hope, and are acquainted with it, and perhaps acquainted as well with this list here. This was the pre-listening discussion. And here we have a list of different professions. Beside it, we see how much it has changed. So if we see a high percentage, that indicates that there are more of these jobs. And of course, you notice that the highest is at the top. Beside it, we have the salary rank. Although the job may be changing, it may be popular, many people are doing it, but it does not necessarily mean that it is making you good money. So please look at the first one. Here we have medical assistants. There's going to be a great increase in them. Notice fastest growing. They're growing a lot, but the salary rank is low, and it does not require much training. You might consider that to be good. Notice on the job, meaning you don't need a degree. But as we go down, you see the different ones we have here. Network systems and data communication analysts, very much needed. High salary, but you need a bachelor's degree. Physician's assistants, 49%, high ranking, also high uh, salary rank, but you need a BA, you need a bachelor's degree, you need a university degree. Home health jobs, or home health aides, people who help in the home, 48% healthy increase, but very low in pay. Look, number four, huh? lowest 25%. Again, you don't need a degree. Now, I'm sure you looked at these uh, at home, and you see the general trend is that if it has a low salary, usually it has a low degree requirement. If it has a high salary, usually you need a degree. And that was a point that was made in your lecture. So with this in mind, let's look at the questions after this chart. What information is given in this table? Well, as you saw, this uh, takes up the subject of the job market, that certain jobs will increase greatly, but not all of them have a high salary. If they have a high salary, you probably need some preparation. What years are covered? As you saw, they were covering from 2000 to 2012, huh? the first uh, decade or so of our present century. The tables have four columns, the type of job, then how likely it is to increase, the salary, and the requirements. All of these were indicators of the subject we had in our lecture this time. What job do you hope to have in the future? I don't know, but I hope that it will be one you like. I hope that it will be one that is also well paid. But it's a good likelihood that if it's well paid, you will need a degree. You will need to have some college education. Which jobs require a college education? Most of the good ones. Which jobs have the highest salaries? Those that require training. Now, vocabulary, this is vocabulary that's very important in our uh, the passage you listen to. Automation, the use of machines. Bottom line is a sort of a, if you like, a catchphrase today, meaning the final point about something, the bottom line. And we heard the bottom line in our lecture. Do you remember? The bottom line was, if you want a good job, get a good education. That's the bottom line. That's the basic point. Category, meaning groupings. Now we had different categories, health jobs. We had computer jobs. These are different categories. Competition, trying to get, working together. Uh, uh, two people want the same job, they're in competition with each other. Economy, what we have, of course, the economy of a country is all that is do, uh, regarding buying and selling and making money. So the economy of a country depends on many things. Health care, illness, these are all basic vocabulary. On the second column, we have job market, labor costs, manufacturing, Rank, meaning how high in our list there, we had different ranks. Salary, how much you earn. 
service. We heard that service means doing something useful as opposed to manufacturing, which means producing something useful. Huh? We heard about the manufacturing sector and the service sector. A trend is the general direction. Huh? These were all vocabulary words of importance in your passage. Our verb was to grow by. To grow is a basic verb, but if we put by, we're indicating the percent, by 50% or by 60%. Now, you have listened, I hope, to the lecture, which was presented last time, and you have an idea of the content. Let's look at some of the strategy you might take into consideration if you were taking notes. Now, one of the basic ideas in our passage was cause and effect. We heard things are changing, and we ask why. Taking notes on cause and effect. To understand the main points in this lecture, you need to recognize the relationship between causes, reasons, and effects, or results. Study the examples below. Notice that sometimes the cause is mentioned first, and other times the effect is first. We have the example, many people use arrows in notes to indicate cause and effect, so please do the same below. Notice our example. Because of robots, the number of factory jobs has decreased. Because, due to, indicates the cause, the other is the effect. So here we would say robots are the cause, the number of jo factory jobs being reduced is the result. Because robots are cheaper than human workers, factories are using more robots. Again, we have the cause and then the effect. But notice the next one. Human workers cannot work 24 hours a day. As a result, more and more factories are using robots. Notice here, we have the result. As a result, therefore, indicates our result. So again, it's coming second, cause and then result. Notice, though, the next one, labor costs are cheaper in Asia, so many American factories are moving there. So first we have the cause, and that's the effect. But in the next area, it's the other way around. The number of factory jobs decreased because of robots, due to. We can put that at the end. So don't think we always have the cause and then the effect. It depends on the grammar of the statement. Now, I'm not going to spend more time on that. Let's get down to examples. Now, at the bottom of the page, you have an exercise about taking notes on cause and effect statements. Take notes on each sentence from the strategy box above. Remember to abbreviate, use symbols, and write keywords only. Compare notes with a classmate. Let's go through these together, and I hope you see how we use arrows and symbols to indicate cause and effect. Notice on this page according to the United States okay I'm sorry because of technology I'm sorry I'm reading you the wrong one I think here am I not page 84 Okay. All right, we have here the sentences about cause and effect. I'm going to go back to them, and let's look and see how we take notes on them. Okay, this is page 85. So listen and notice the type of statement we have there. Because of robots, the number of factory jobs has decreased. You see factory job with an arrow going down. They have decreased. Why? Because of robots. Notice that the arrow indicates the cause. We could either read it from the right and say robots have caused factory jobs to be reduced or factory jobs have decreased because of robots. Notice the notes do not need the grammar. When you take notes, you want to get the facts down. You don't need to use words like due to, because of. You can use symbols. Let's look at number two. Because robots are cheaper than human workers, factories are using more robots. Notice cheap robots. I put an arrow. Result, factories use more robots. Notice the uh, arrow going to the top indicating more robots. 
Number uh, three, notice it comes after four on the, on the exercise here. Number three, human workers cannot work 24 hours a day as a result. Therefore, more and more factories are using robots. Human workers, less than 24 hours a day. Therefore, factories in use, more robots. I hope you'll look at these and you'll see that these are examples of how to take notes about cause and effect. Now that was one basic point about note taking in this unit, that how to use notes. Please check 5, 6, and 7 when you have a chance. Let's move on to the next point. Another point about taking notes in this unit is the use of abbreviations. Which abbreviations? That's up to you. But notice, it takes a lot of time to write economy. I would just abbreviate it, econ, period. Manufacturing, well, you spend a long time. But MFCTRG would be, for me, enough to indicate manufacturing. Service, S-E-R-V, dot. Technology, standardly, T-E-C-H-N, dot. Approximately, we sometimes write approx, A-P-P-R-O-X, but we also have a shorter one in English, C-A, which indicates Latin circa, meaning around, not exact. Again, I would always prefer the, the shorter the abbreviation that you can use, the better. You save time. Number, we have a symbol. You know it from your, uh, your mobile phones. We call it the hash symbol, the number symbol. Also, million. Now, I put here M-I-L-L. Now, if I wrote down dollars, $5 million, I would just put 5M, because dollars cannot be meter, cannot be mile. So again, your notes depend on what you know and what you can understand from your notes. Medical, M-E-D, period. Computers, C-P-T-R. Percent, we have a symbol. Bachelor of Arts, we have a standard abbreviation, B-A. In fact, most people just do that. They just say B-A. M-A, Ph.D. They use the abbreviation as a word. Now, let's look at the exercise. This is what I was looking at before, uh, erroneously. Uh, this is number five here, looking at ways to take notes about cause and effect. These were the ones I started to read before. Notice, because of technology, we are able to manufacture goods by using machines instead of human workers. Now, techna, we'll put a little uh, arrow, machines, not humans, manufacture goods. From this, I would be able to reconstruct using technology. This means that we can use machines instead of humans in order to. So I hope you see the basic idea of note-taking. You get the idea down, basic words, abbreviations, and symbols where possible. Number two. As a result, thousands of manufacturing jobs don't exist anymore. Now, I usually, to indicate negative, I put an uh, X through something. Notice, as a result, thousands of jobs, I put an X through it, meaning don't exist. Okay. Number three, we're going to need more medical services because people are living longer and longer. Okay. Notice, more medical services result longer lives. Huh? Number four, also because of developments in medical technology, people with serious illnesses are able to live much longer than they could in the past. Notice we don't need all those words. Developments, mod tech, modern technology, arrow leads to serious illness, live longer. Huh? I would know from serious illness, it means people with serious illness. If you need to put that, put it there. But I'm trying always, when I take notes, to be as economical, use as little as possible. Number five, the main reason for the huge growth in this category is that women now work. Huge growth, G-R-T-H, what? Result of women work. I'm not going to write women working or women are working or women do work. These are notes. Huh? We want to get the basic information down. Uh, part six is also about taking notes, but this is statistics. 
I think we did this once before. Let's look at the statistics. According to the United States government, approximately 2.5 million manufacturing jobs have disappeared since the year 2000. Now, notice, I put 2.5 million manufacturing jobs, I put an X through it, huh? since 2001. Those are the basic facts in that statement. Number two, at the same time the number of manufacturing jobs is decreasing, the number of service jobs is probably going to grow by more than 20 million just in the next 10 years. Service jobs going up, 20 million going up next 10 years. Huh? At the same time, so we just show both are going up. Number three, almost half the jobs on the list are in the field of health care. Half jobs come from health care. That's all I needed to get down for my note-taking. Number four, according to the U.S. Department of Labor, the number of health care jobs will increase by almost 3 million in the next 10 years. So U.S. Department of Labor, arrow, they say health care jobs up 3 million next 10 years. I don't have to say in the next 10 years, by 3 million. Those are structure words. Really, we don't need them when we take notes. Number five, the number of jobs in the computer industry is expected to grow by almost 30% in the next 10 years. Again, jobs slash computer is computer industry, industry up 30% next 10 years. I hope you're getting the idea. This will be of great use to you when you are tested. That you hear a passage, you can get that information down using keywords, abbreviations, and symbols. All right, let's look at our next section here. Let me remove that. Taking notes. Listen to the lecture and take notes in the best way you can on your own paper. Listen specifically for the following information. Some of you may have done that. Uh, how has the U.S. job market changed? If you listened, you remember the major change has been from a manufacturing economy to a service economy. Why? You were given various reasons. You heard about automation. You heard about foreign competition. You heard about the changing uh, uh, job market because women are working. So all of these were reasons. Uh, in part two, what are the three categories of fast-growing occupations between 2002 and 2012? I think you remember healthcare, computer, and personal services. Huh? So that's general listening, and I hope you were able to distinguish that. Now we have outlining the lecture. This would be the way you would like to take notes, ideally. This means that you find you recognize what are the important points, and you put the less important points below them. And here we have the notes. I filled them in. Maybe you did yours. You could compare. So two questions. The lecturer says, I have two questions. Of course, you take those down. A, what are the best jobs? B, how to prepare for them? History, last hundred years, changing U.S. labor market from manufacture to service. Huh? Again, you could abbreviate service. Huh? Then we had definitions. Manufacturing, make things. Examples, cars, furniture, clothes. Service, do things. Examples, cut hair, fix shoes, sell computers. Did you get those down when you took your notes? I hope so. Then part three was reasons for, and notice we have the arrow, meaning decrease, huh? why there are less manufacturing jobs. A, automation, the use of machines. B, foreign competition. And there we had some stats. We used to use this in English, stats, meaning statistics. 2.5 million manufacturing jobs gone since 2001. Huh? So it would be important to get that figure down. Because if you had a lecture like this, a very likely question would be, how many jobs? Now, if you didn't write it down, it's hard to remember. Was it 2? Was it 3? 2.5? 2? So remember, statistics are important when you take notes. Then the trend. Huh? The trend increase. Huh? 
in the 21st century. Number four, reasons for increase in in-service jobs. A, statistics, notice, problems, 20 million jobs in the next 10 years. Huh? They'll increase. Huh? But let's go on with the, this point here. Part two, fastest growing health jobs, fastest growing service jobs, sorry. A, health care, examples, medical assistance, physical assistance, physical therapy aids, huh? all of those I abbreviated, try to do the same. Reasons, people live longer, and serious ill people live on. Huh? They don't die from serious illness. B was computer. They gave examples, designers, computer engineers, operators. Statistics, up by 30%. Computer jobs, up next 10 years. So we expect a 30% increase in computer jobs over the next 10 years. Notice when I say that, a lot of words, but when you take it as notes, you just have 30% computer jobs, arrow up next 10 years. That tells you the information. This is note taking. Now how can you practice it? You have the passage at home, so try to do it on your own without looking at this and then compare. Huh? You have to work on this yourself. And finally, personal care. Examples, catering. Now, you know catering? People who make food for you. If you have a party, you have someone cater it. Huh? So catering is now very popular. Home health, daycare. Huh? All of those are clear. Daycare means your children are taken care of while you're working. Huh? Reasons for this, women working away from home. Now, the final point, educational requirement for good jobs. And notice, bottom line, you should at least have a BA. Now, this was a lot of practical review work, things you need to work on on your own. But I'm just giving you some examples how I would do it, okay? Now, discussing the lecture. I hope you found it an interesting uh, topic. What is the difference between a service economy and a manufacturing economy? Well, remember we read service, doing things, manufacturing, making things. You have examples of jobs in each category. Well, a paper mill worker is involved in manufacturing. A barber is involved in a service. Teaching is also a service. So if you're planning to be a teacher, you'll be in the service sector of the economy. Number two, how has the American job market changed? Well, we're repeating ourselves from a manufacturing to a service economy. What are two reasons uh, for this change? We heard about automation huh? and foreign competition. Many companies find it cheaper to put their factories in other countries. Um, number three, why will there be more health care jobs in the future? Well, you heard we live longer. And also, when we get seriously ill, it's more likely that we will survive. Huh? And so we stay on and continue to be consumers. Number four, how much will the computer industry grow in the next 10 years? I think you remember in our notes, 30%. What kind of jobs? Well, you heard about computers, designers, operators, so many different things. Uh, number five, what are examples of jobs in the category of personal care? Well, we heard about the examples there of daycare center uh, people, uh, people coming uh, home visiting for health, all of these things. Uh, look, number seven, look at the list of fastest growing occupations. Uh, we did that. Which of these jobs would you like to have? I hope you find one there, and I hope you will succeed. What do you need to do to prepare yourself for this job? If it's a good job, you probably do need an education. Uh, the next thing in your book was a vocabulary exercise. Call this a close exercise. You fill in the vocabulary. I hope you did this. You can check it now. 100 years ago, the United States had a manufacturing economy. This meant that most people made things by hand or machine. In contrast, today, the United States has a service economy in which workers provide services 
instead of making products. The United States has lost a lot of manufacturing jobs, and it is certain that this trend will continue in the future. Huh? Some of our vocabulary, manufacturing, service, trend. There are several reasons for this important change in the U.S. economy. The first is automation. It is cheaper to use machines than human workers in factories. Another reason is competition from foreign countries where labor costs are lower than the United States. Therefore, many products that used to be manufactured in the United States are now made overseas. Vocabulary, economy, automation, competition, labor costs. Huh? And finally, the final point, what, what will the good jobs of the future be? Over the next 10 years, the fastest growing occupations will be in three categories. Huh? Health care, computers, and personal care and services. Many of these jobs will not pay very well. However, if you want to get a good job with a high salary, the bottom line is this. You get a good education. Huh? Categories, health care, salary, bottom line. Well, as you can recognize, we're talking a lot about jobs. And on the following page, what would you like to do? These are nice points of discussion. And if you want to uh, talk about this uh, or email about this, it's just fine. But we really cannot discuss it here. Uh, choose people to be interviewers. I wish we could do that. But we're going to move now to part three. The introductory page of part three shows you what's involved. Different professions. Remember, a profession, a specific job that requires uh, training. And here we have an electrician, of course, is a professional. We have the lady here, which looks like an architect. Huh? And at the bottom here, we have a lady sewing. This is a, a tailor. And we have a dental, probably a dentist or a dental technician, someone working on teeth. Now, your job in this context exercise is to listen to a conversation and decide on the occupation. Now, here are the occupations that you are choosing among. A, architect. You should know architect, someone who designs buildings. A computer programmer, designs programs for computers. Accountant, who keeps track of your money, if you have lots of it. Uh, D, a restaurant host. A host is the opposite of guest. So if you go somewhere, you're the guest. The person receives you as a host. You go to a very nice restaurant. They have someone who receives you at the door and takes you to your seat. That is the host. Sometimes we call it metro d, but uh, host is a more common English word. And then we have the dentist, the doctor for your teeth, police officer, our friend on the road. Uh, then we have g, the receptionist, the person who receives you at a business or any place. And the tailor, the person who makes your clothes, and electrician. Now your job is to listen to context and decide whether you're going to choose a, B, C, D, E, F, or G. Huh? That is your job this time. All right, let's go to that right away. All right, here's conversation one. Listen carefully. Man, may I see your driver's license, please? What did I do? Uh, you ran a red light. Oh, but I'm sure it was yellow. What's the man's job? Now notice we've chosen F, police officer. What were the clues you heard? Red light. She says yellow light, driver's license. You put those together, the only person who would ask you those things would be a police officer. Let's listen to number two. Woman. Is this your first visit? B. No, I come in every six months for a checkup. A. Oh, I see. Uh, did you bring your insurance form with you? B. Here it is. A. Okay, take a seat, and the doctor will be with you shortly. Okay. Now, we decided here on G, huh? receptionist. Huh? Is this your first visit? Uh, have a seat. Do you have insurance? 
and the doctor or dentist. Huh? So obviously this is the receptionist who receives you if you go to a doctor's office. Number three. A. Uh, do you have a reservation? B. Uh, yes, the name is Jackson, a party of four. A. Um, would you like to sit inside or out on the patio? A. Um, we'll, we'll choose outside, and please bring us the coffee right away. Well, we chose here restaurant host. Why? Do you have a reservation? Would you like to sit on the patio? I'd like the coffee, huh? So put those things together, and that must be a restaurant host. Number four. Hi, Jim. It's Carl. It looks like I'm going to need your services again this year. B. I thought you always did your taxes by yourself. A. Yeah, but this year things are very complicated. I lost money in the stock market. Then I inherited my uncle's house, remember? B. Hmm, I guess you do need professional help. And we chose here C, accountant. This is about money, huh? taxes. And then we heard that he has lost money in the stock market and that he has inherited a house. All of these would be things you'd need in your financial records. So accountant was the choice. And the last one, conversation five. May I help you? Ah, uh, yes, the sleeves on this jacket are too short. How much would it cost for you to make them longer? Eh? Now uh, let me have a look at it. Well, I guess I could do it for thirty dollars. Eh? That much? Now, we chose here H, Taylor. We didn't hear just about buying something, but making the sleeves, all the sleeves, longer. Huh? So, and uh, could do it for $30. So we assume someone that's changing the length of your jacket or your shirt must be a tailor. Okay, so those were the choices you should have made. Now, we have a pronunciation exercise in this unit. Uh, it's about the role of intonation. Let's have a look at this. This is called the intonation of tag questions. When people need information or don't know something, they normally ask a question. For example, are you from China? However, when English speakers think they know the answer to a question, but they aren't sure, they often form tag questions with a rising intonation. Listen. You're from China, aren't you? You're from China, aren't you? Notice that, right? Aren't you? That indicates that you're really asking a question. Or, you speak Chinese, don't you? You want the person to say, yes, I do, or no, I don't. That you, rising intonation, is an indication that you want an answer. In contrast, it's also possible to form tag questions with falling intonation. Listen. It's nice weather, isn't it? That that test was hard, wasn't it? Now, not wasn't it? Not isn't it? But having re this other intonation indicates that it's a fact. You're just telling the person it's true. He's a terrible person, isn't he? He's a terrible person, isn't he? Isn't he? That's a question. He's a terrible person, isn't he? Isn't he means it's a fact. So tag questions can have two functions, to ask a question or to show your affirmation of your statement. Now, I'm going to read some statements, and I hope you'll hear whether they are real questions or whether they are uh, affirmations, huh? expecting agreement. Number one, we're having a staff meeting tomorrow, aren't we? Aren't we? Number two, you're the programmer from Turkey, aren't you? You're the programmer from Turkey, aren't you? Three. This exercise is easy, isn't it? This exercise is easy, isn't it? Four. The supervisor is married, isn't she? The supervisor is married, isn't she? Five. Smoking is forbidden here, isn't it? Smoking is forbidden here, isn't it? Six. That test was really hard, wasn't it? That test was really hard, wasn't it? 
7. The secretary speaks Arabic, doesn't he? The secretary speaks Arabic, doesn't he? 8. That training video was really boring, wasn't it? That training video was really boring, wasn't it? 9. The marketing director speaks beautiful Japanese, doesn't she? The marketing director speaks beautiful Japanese, doesn't she? 10. We need to sign our names on these reports, don't we? Don't we? Okay, I hope you hear the two intonation patterns. And that brings us to the last exercise or the last point. Uh, well, actually, we're in a preview. The last section is about uh, daily chores. Uh, and we have some, just to uh, note here, usage, to make breakfast or make lunch is an idiom meaning to get it ready. Huh? To do the dishes is an idiom meaning to wash the dishes. To make the beds means to arrange them, huh? to put them in nice condition. To balance the family budget means to compare income and expenses. Huh? To balance it, make sure you're not spending more and you're earning. Huh? To do the laundry, do it means to wash the clothes. To water the lawn means to provide water. And to shop for grocery means to go and buy them. Huh? Now we're going to hear, this is our last exercise in this unit, uh, daily activities. Huh? We have the daily activities. I wonder if we can get them all on here at one time. Well, you have it in your contents and you have it in your book. So let's just have a look and see which ones you're going to choose. This is your passage for the task. Do you want to know what I do on a typical day? Well, I'll tell you what I did yesterday as an example. I woke up before my wife and son, and the first thing I did was to come into the kitchen and make the coffee. Then I made my son's lunch, you know, to take to school. And after that, I started cooking breakfast. I made eggs, oatmeal, and toast, because I always want my family to start the day with a full stomach. Then my wife and son came into the kitchen and sat down to eat. While they were eating, I threw a basket of laundry into the washing machine, and then I also sat down to eat. Now, from listening, you should have heard the first thing was, he made the breakfast. For number two, we heard two things. We heard they had the breakfast while, huh? while he did the laundry. So we put two under both of those. While indicates at the same time. Huh? Okay, let's continue. After breakfast, I walked my son to the bus stop, and I waited with him until the bus came. I kissed him goodbye and walked home. As soon as I entered the house, the phone rang. It was my mother-in-law. She wanted to know if my wife was still there but I told her she had just left. So I talked with her for a few minutes about the weather and her garden, and then I got off the phone. Okay, let's see what we did with that. Now notice, I put here three, the wife leaving. Why? Because when the lady called, we heard she had already left. So that happened first. She left, and then the mother called, huh, and found out the lady had left. So that's three and four. Let's continue with the rest of the day. After that, let's see, I spent three hours cleaning the house. After lunch, I went shopping for groceries. By then, it was three o'clock. It was already time to pick up my son at the bus stop. I helped him with his homework, and then my wife came home. Now, notice all those activities, the only one that we see there is number five, helping him with his homework. Normally, she gets home at about 6 p.m., but yesterday she was a few minutes early. I was so busy all day that I hadn't had time to water the garden, so I did it while my wife made dinner. Okay, Now, we see her making dinner here. That will be number, that should be number six here. Yes, she's making dinner, and also number six, working in the garden. I remember while at the same time. And then both of us just collapsed in front of the TV, and that was my day. Nothing glamorous, just really busy. All right, that was a rather full unit, wasn't it, huh? I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you earned, learned a lot 
about the job market, about being busy, and about doing things. And I hope your day is not as busy as this day. All right, thank you very much.